Good morning, everyone. And to everyone else out there, this is the WIA Project. And we have another amazing person here with us from the Philippines. And she is working at Island Aviation Incorporated. Please, let's welcome Engineer Shaira Tenorio. Hi, Engineer Shaira. Hello, everyone. And hi, Joanna. How um, are you today? All, I just want to say I'm so honored to be interviewed by WIA Project. It's, I'm so glad. I'm so happy. Um, I'm feeling okay. Um, great. This is such a big opportunity for me to share my story with you guys. And I'm just so happy. So how about you? How are you? <laughs> I, I'm doing great despite the quarantine situation here in the Philippines. So for the information of our viewers, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So I am engineer Shaira Tenorio. I'm originally from Cebu and I'm now in Manila um, working here. And a little bit of myself, I like engineering a lot. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm the youngest in my family and uh, I took up Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Engineering um, in one of the schools there. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's Cebu Aeronautical Technical School. Yeah, I'm actually very much familiar with C C with CATS. They call it CATS, right? <laughs> also, I'm currently working in Island of Aegean. Um, we are a charter company. We eight people from Amanpolo, if you're familiar with Amanpolo. Um, it's one of the great cities here in Philippines. Wow, that's very amazing. So um, from your background, I actually read up on you <laughs> and we see that you've shifted from civil engineering to aeronautical engineering. Can you tell us more about your decision there? What made you push for that change? Actually, it's a funny story because growing up, I really wanted to be an aircraft engineer. But then when I graduated in high school, I think I took up civil engineering because of family pressure. You know, um, my sister really wanted me to just study um, in Cebu. Um, I really wanted to go to school in Holy Angels University. You're from how, right? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I actually took an exam and I passed, fortunately. But then my family was not in favor of it because Pampanga is too far away. So yeah, I took up civil engineering because of you know, my family, just family pressure. But then uh, it's really different because you know when you really want something, but you, you, um, there's a way for you to have it, but it's really not much of a choice because say your family is really uh, financing you up as of the moment, and you really do, don't have a choice. So I took up civil engineering for just a year, and of course I'm interested with civil engineering, but it's just so different with what you want. So I shifted. I really shifted. Good thing I found this school in Cebu, though. Oh yeah. So passion really played a role in it, right? Like, like you yeah, said, passion. when you were younger, you really, really wanted to take that up. So you found a way to really push for your dreams on that part. Yeah, I worked hard. I really worked hard to find a best school for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, from your, I actually saw that you were featured in a. Aviation Asia, right? Yeah. And we noticed that you initially wanted to become a pilot. Is that right as well? Uh-huh. I still do now. <laughs> oh, okay. But I, I heard that you would much rather be an aircraft maintenance engineer. Yeah. yeah. Why, why is that? Could you walk through the process of wanting to be an engineer more than a pilot? Well... When I was a kid, um, there was this one time with my mom. I saw this big aircraft, and of course, I was really curious about it. And I said to my mom, 
mom, I really wanted to fly one. But then, you know, growing up, I realized it's not just about flying it. I, I, it's more about knowing the science behind it, the engineering behind it, and the principles, you know. I mean, who's not curious of a big aircraft flying, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and um, growing up also, um, I've been really into, uh, I've been reading a lot of books about aircraft. And, you know, it just drives me to a point where uh, I really did uh, my OJT, um, first in a small aircraft. And then I decided to go with a bigger aircraft, which is, airline so because of my passion it became an inspira- inspiration to a lot that's why i got with innovation in asia and i'm really glad about it because ever since i was featured in aviation in asia there's been a lot of messages um asking me uh to what would really inspire them to you know just follow not literally follow me, but follow my footsteps on taking up uh, aircraft engineering. Yeah, and now you're here. You're being featured in oh. WIA. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm so honored and I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, and we're honored that you granted us an interview with you. So um, tell us about your experience of the working in the field and seeing as you, you just started, right? You just graduated 2019, am I correct? And and you've already gone so far. So tell us about the working experience. Well, working as I just finished my board exam wasn't really expected. I mean, I myself did not expect to have a job right away because, you know, here in the Philippines, it's so hard to get a job, right? You feel me, right? Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> it's just so hard. But then I guess when you really want something and you don't stop, uh, you know, working for it, God just miraculously gave it to you. Funny story, uh, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, applying for a job was really hard for me. It took me uh, a month to really find a perfect fit for me. So, uh, sorry, uh, applying for a job. Okay, so I started applying for a job in Pampanga. Oh, wow. In, in Singapore Airlines. So I had my first interview there. And fortunately, I did not get the job, but it's okay though. And then um, I, uh, there was this day I really felt hopeless. And it was, I think it was two days. I was like, what am I going to do with my life? I'm starting to consider, um, you know, shifting careers. And, but then I said to myself, no, I'm not going to give up. This is what I want. I mean, I've come to, I've come far away, seriously. And I'm not just going to give this up. So, yeah, there's this one day I'm with my friend. Then I printed like five uh, copies of my resume. <laughs> then we went to Pasay. Uh, then, yeah, we just started going through different uh, general aviation companies and we just handed our, our resume. And uh, after two days, I guess, I got a call from one of the gen of companies there. Uh, and it's Island Aviation. So when they called me, uh, they did not uh, mention what was my position, what was the position going to be. So, yeah, I went there for an interview, and then it really went great. It did. And I was surprised when they said nah, I was hired. Immediately? Uh, oh, yeah, immediately. Wow. Like that, yeah, I know it really um exciting and i'm nervous about it though but 
then, when I found out what was the decision going to be, I was, okay, I'm not going to be able to handle it, I know. But you have to start at a small beginning, right? And so I, I accepted the challenge. And it's been, it's going to be two years. I'm going to be two years now in Ireland Aviation as a quality inspector. Wow. And, yeah. Well, all I can say is that every day is a challenge for me. And I'm more criticized by my age than my gender, mm. to be really honest. Yeah, because I am still 23. <laughs> and yeah, I know. And all my co-workers are like, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, speak low of them, but they've always been criticizing me of my age. Like, you're still young, you don't know nothing yet, and you come far away from us, but I, I did not prove them anything. I just proved uh, to myself that I can do it. It's just so hard sometimes because um, you expected your co co-workers to support you, right? Yeah. But then it's sad to say that sometimes they're like your brutal enemies. <laughs> <laughs> and my job is and my job is really hard because um, I'm the one like you know, finding fault in any situation. Mm -hmm. But then it, it's been fun. It's been, it's been fun. Um, all I can say for working experience is that no matter how hard they are, um, you know, no matter how hard they make it hard for you, if I make any sense, uh, you just have to keep on you know, flourishing. You just have to keep on, uh, you know, just be on your lane. Mm -hmm. Be what you want. Uh, do your job. Just really do your job. And uh, take note that you're not doing it for them, but you are doing it for yourself and for the company. Wow. Yes. I really, I really like that. I really like that. So considering how stressful apparently your working environment is, do you have any hobbies outside of work? I do. Uh, I love singing a lot. <laughs> and yeah. And I also write. And I'm hoping that someday I could publish, you know, what I write every day. Because what I write is also about empowering women in innovation and wow yeah it, it's uh it's gonna be well a big leap for me if I took this because I don't know if this is gonna be known or I'm not actually onto the fame but I just want to inspire a lot of this that's just my agenda right now I really want to inspire a lot of women uh to pursue career innovation. That's, mm -hmm. that's, so yeah, I, I write a lot and I also we, we would love to read what you write someday. Someday, I hope, yeah. So for, for the side of the WIA project, what can you say um, about what we're doing and how do you think we could be more efficient in this advocacy? Knowing uh, WIA project, I was amazed by your agenda because right now um, I can see that in this pandemic, right, um, I can see a lot of people giving up on their dreams in skills. And I'm really just frustrated by the fact that they are in the verge of giving up. You know? Because as you know, um, this pandemic will not last forever. Um, this is just a phase, and I really hope that we a project uh, could inspire not just women, but everyone who loves to pursue uh, career innovation. I hope they could inspire a lot of you to take up this uh, field because um, this is really fun, right? Aviation yeah. is fun. It's yeah. <laughs> challenging, yes, but it can really mold you into a person you don't expect 
uh, to me. Um, like me, I, I was really naive back then. Um, but look, at, I mean, I'm not really um, boasting, but right now I've gained a lot of confidence, especially with the help of my work. And it's really uh, given me inspiration to inspire a lot of women because I've been there, you know, I've, I've been uh, naive also, and I've been confused. And I've been on the verge of giving up. But I just want to say that please don't just please don't give up because everything will be paid off eventually. And as for Ria, I think Ria is efficient enough. It's just that this pandemic is really hindering it, you know. I mean, without this pandemic, we could, uh, we could do, I don't know, maybe interventions. Not really interventions, but events that could um, aspire a lot of youth to um, to so that we I can introduce innovation um, more, you know. And yeah, hopefully of, soon. <laughs> and also um, orientation, online orientation, which you do right because I heard that this aria event. Oh yeah, um, uh, yeah. Um, we uh, was one of the partners. Yeah. yeah I, I saw that, which is really inspiring for me also because you know, even though I'm not part of the event, I was uh, I I attended that orientation, and I was yeah I I was really inspired by the speaker, and it's really a great platform. I I would really support it, and I hope. To uh, you know, to invite more of my colleagues uh, supporting this project. Yeah, thank you so much. I didn't, I didn't actually know that you were watching, but thank you for supporting yeah, I, that. <laughs> so to wrap up this interview, can you please share with us a quote or something inspiring that you would want our viewers to to hear? me through life is um just i know this is very common but this has been helping me and still do right now uh so it's just be yourself because you are a different person to different people and no matter what they say about you you have the power to i know uh you would you have the power rather on how you're going to react to it. So no matter what they say, it's either you're going to take it as a positive or a negative uh, response. And also, um, I'd like to share to everyone that you have to acknowledge your feelings, you know, in every situation. However you're feeling is how you're feeling. So um, instead of, you know, just shutting it down or being scared of it, you have to learn to say yes because when you acknowledge your feelings uh the good news that it fades away it really does and you're gonna be so happy and so proud of yourself that you are where you want to be you are you've come too far and you're gonna be much prouder when you realize that everything you work hard for is right in front of you that's what I feel right now. And I know this, this this is not the end for me. I still have a long way to go. And I just really want to inspire a lot of you, especially women. Um, so in order to make a change for this world, uh, you have to take note that you should start to change the future. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Engineer Shire. I'm sure a lot of our viewers here are really inspired with you, especially at a young age, you have achieved so much. So thank you, thank you for gracing us with your presence today. It's such an honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And that's it for this interview. Again, this is Engineer Shira Tenorio of Island Aviation Incorporated.
so much.